Hey, it's Michael from Mark Smarter. In this episode of How to Dynamo, I'm going to show you how to get and set type parameters using Dynamo. Now, we can set type parameters directly in the type using the properties window in Revit, or we can even set them in a schedule. But let's say we want to set a type parameter in multiple types at one time based on some other model data. This is a great use case for Dynamo, and this is where Dynamo really shines. So using Dynamo, I'm saying Dynamo a lot, we can get elements, we can get their types, we can read data from the types, and then we can use that data to update other type parameters. So interested in seeing how it works? All right, let's switch on over to Dynamo and take a look. So I'm here in Revit 2024, and I want to write a Dynamo script that's going to help me set some door type parameters. Specifically, I want to uh, look at the fire rating of my door types, and then I want to set the construction type based on the fire rating. And again, I could do this you know, using a schedule. I could edit each of the uh, the types, but I want to automate this. And also I want to do it kind of all at one time. I want to grab up all the types. I want it to determine whether I need to update that type parameter and then just do it all for me. So let's look at how we do this in Dynamo. I'm going to switch over to Dynamo here. I have a new script file up and ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my doors. So I'm going to go to Revit selection and I'm going to use the all elements of category node. And with this, I need to specify my category. So I'm going to click on the categories node right there. The category I'm going to choose is doors. So I'm going to click down here. And what this node is going to do is it's going to get me all of the door instances in my model. So the key part of this script is once I have the instances, I actually need to get the door types. Fortunately for us, there is a node that will do just that. So I'm going to go into Revit Elements, Element, and I'm going to use the Element Type node. So if I scroll down here in the question mark, here's the element type. What this node is, will do is it will return the type of any instance. So I have all of my door instances here. In fact, if I look at, uh, let me give this a run. And if I look at that, there's 142 door instances. And so for each of those door instances, I'm going to go ahead and get that door type. And I can scroll through the preview and I can see a lot of them are, are kind of uh, similar types, some of them are listed as being rated, others are not. But I'm getting all the types for all the instances. So you can see, again, I have 146, uh, sorry, 142 doors, and I have 142 types. Obviously, there's probably some duplication in here, at least I hope they would. So what I want to do now is I just want to get the unique items from my list of types. I can go into the list library here. I'm going to go to inspect and I'm looking for the node called unique items right here this last one at the bottom so this will take a list of items and it's going to return just one instance of each so we went from 142 uh, door types obviously there's a lot of duplication there down to oh, let's give it a run down to 25 so now I have the 25 door types that are in my model that are being used in my model so I want to get the fire rating from those types. So again, I have the actual door type here. So once I have the door type, that's the element I'm working with. So I can use my get parameter value by name node uh, to get a particular parameter. So we're going to go back to our Revit library and I'm going to go to Revit elements and I'm going to go to the element subcategory and get parameter value by name. And again, I'm not doing this on my instances here. I'm going to be working on the type, or more specifically, my list of unique types. So that's I'm going to plug that unique type, unique items here into the element node. And then the parameter node, I'm going to uh, for the parameter input, I'm going to use a code block, and I'm just going to type fire rating. So I plug that into parameter type, and let's give it a run. I'm going to hover over that. And I'll see all of the various fire ratings for those types. Now, some of them are listed uh, with a min suffix. So if they have a fire rating, they have min for minutes. Some of them are NR for not rated. Some of them don't have any value at all. So since I'm getting this 
uh, parameter value, I'm going to use this to determine which nodes, uh, sorry, which door types I want to update. So we have those parameter values. These are actually listed as a string. So I can go back to my library and I'm going to use the uh, string library and I'm going to use under inspect. So I'm looking for the string contains node. What this node will do is it will provide a true false value if a particular string, like my fire rating, contains a, another string. So the string we're checking is coming out of get parameter value by name. So that goes into string. Search for, I'm going to use a code block, and I'm going to just search for that min suffix. So all my fire rated doors have min indicating the number of minutes. So that's what we're going to search for. And then I can provide a Boolean here if I want to ignore the case, but I, I know it's capitalized here, so I'm just going to type that in, give this a run. And it's going to, again, return a series of true false values here, whether or not that string of the fire rating contains that particular text min. Now that I have a, a list of true false values, I'm going to go up to list and inspect, and I'm going to use the filter by Boolean mask node. And actually, I'm sorry, it's not under inspect, it is under modify. There it is, filter by Boolean mask. So this is hands down one of my favorite nodes. What it allows me to do is filter a list of elements into kind of two groups based on another list of true false values. So if it's the value is true for that particular element, it's going to go into this in output. And if it's false, it goes into the out output. So my mask here is coming from the strings contains node. This is my list of true false values. Now the list that I'm going to filter is my list of door types from unique items. Let me lift that up here so I get a clean shot with my wire there. So I give this a run and it's going to subdivide my door types into ones that have a fire rating and ones that don't. So I can see here there's actually eight door types with a fire rating and then there's 17 that don't. So I've done that filter by using that filter by Boolean mask. So now we can get on to the, the second part uh, of this how to dynamo and that's to set parameter values in a type. Now that's going to be really easy for us because we actually already have the type. We've already selected the type from all of our door instances right here and then we've filtered them. So we have the door types when we get to our filter by Boolean mask. So I want to change the a construction type parameter of my door types to be indicated as fire rated. And I can do that by using a set parameter by name. So if I go into Revit elements element, I'm going to get the set parameter value by name right here. So the, the element that I'm setting is coming out of the in output of our filter by Boolean mask. These are all the door types that have some kind of fire rating indicated. Now the parameter name that I'm going to use is construction type. And then the value I'm going to put in, I'm just going to put fire rated. All right, so those are my parameter name. That's my parameter value. And I can plug that in right here. So if I give this a run, it's going to update those door types. I can switch over into Revit and let me grab or click on one of these doors here and I need my looks like I turned off my properties window let's get that back real quick and we can just verify that that uh, construction type property has been updated so I've selected a, a fire stair door it should be fire rated I can check and see if I scroll down actually I need to edit my type because that's where I made the change if I edit the type I can see um, scrolling through oh, here's our construction type right here is set to fire rated. And then if I look at the fire rating itself, 180 minutes. So it makes sense. It found that uh, suffix min, use that to determine that this was a fire rated door and then set that construction type right there. So what this kind of demonstrates, at least in this example, is that uh, the set parameter by name and get parameter by name it doesn't really matter if you're working on an instance parameter or a type parameter. What matters is getting the right element. So 
using my all elements of category node, I'm getting all the instances. So if I want to get the types of those instances, I can use the element element type. Once I have that element type, I can get or set the parameter much like I would do for an instance. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something and I'll talk to you soon.